Hello and welcome to Interview. I am Fennel Neptune. In today's program, we will discuss livestock butchering and the meat inspection process. And with me to discuss this topic is Senior Environmental Health Officer for Food Safety, Uni Pierre, and also Senior Agricultural Officer, Columbus Philippi. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great. When it comes to butchering of animals, and the selling of meat. There is a process. Can you tell us what is the role of the Ministry of Agriculture and also the Environmental Health Division in this process? Okay, um, the role of the Ministry of Agriculture is to ensure that all meat, all animals destined for slaughter receive an anti-mortem inspection. At that anti-mortem inspection, animals are passed or restricted from slaughter. Hence, you have a safe animal that is destined for slaughter and you will end up with a safe, safer meat for consumption. Great. Uh, basically, the role of the Ministry of Health is to ensure that um, meat that is destined for sale um, is fit for human consumption, um, that that meat is wholesome, that it is free from disease, and um, that is, it is also handled and sold under sanitary conditions. Wonderful. And we, of course, the first part of the process is the anti-mortem inspection, mm -hmm. uh, which is conducted by Ministry of Agriculture. Yeah. Can you tell us a little more about this process? Okay, this process entails examina physical examination of the animal, both at rest and in motion. Um, we look for abnormalities in the breathing, that's respiration, in the structure and conformity of the animal, ab and abnormalities in the odor, of the animal, an animal supposed to smell like, an, like a do, uh, in fact, a cow supposed to smell like a cow, in other words. Mm -hmm. um, abnormalities in the gait, that's how they walk, and posture, how they stand, and, uh, and that's what we look for. Um, and whenever those abnormalities are detected, then those animals are bad from, from entering the slaughterhouse. Okay, so if it's a situation where the animal doesn't seem fit, for slaughter, then they would not be allowed to. They not they not be allowed to 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 enter a slaughterhouse, or they'll be they'll deem unfit for slaughter, and they'll be dealt with accordingly. For example, they might be retained and then treated if if the if the disease or the conditions require treatment. Okay, and what is the time frame for um, for this anti mortem inspection? Okay. An anti mortem inspection should take place within. 24 hours before slaughter. And if 24 hours have expired and that slaughter don't, doesn't take place, then an anti another anti-mortem has to be performed again. Which so in, the, in, in, in essence, it's valid for only 24 hours. Okay, so then it must be done within the 24 hours? Within the 24 hours. Okay, so it means that if it's not done within the 24 hours, then it means that they would have to wait until it's done. Again, so yeah. Okay. So another request is put then another anti-mortem inspection is done and you, you clear to slaughter again. Okay. And um, we will touch a little bit more about the, in terms of the butcher and what is required, but I wanted Mr. Pierre to tell us a little more about the meat inspection process. What is the purpose of this inspection after the whole anti-mortem inspection? In keeping with uh, the slaughterhouse regulation and the Public Health Act, um, the Ministry has a responsibility, Ministry of Health has a responsibility to ensure that meat that is being sold um, to the public is in fact wholesome. Um, coming out of that process which Mr. Philippi has outlined, uh, once an animal has, been pa has passed an anti-mortem and that animal proceeds um, to, uh, to, 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 to slaughter, um, that animal of course is tagged as well and um, we will start with the documents. Mm -hmm. As part of that inspection process, that document that comes from the anti-mortem, and Mr. Philippi would elaborate a little more on this, that animal will be tagged. And the tag that the animal has um, would correspond to the documentation that is given. Um, so we will first need to ensure that this animal has gotten an anti-mortem inspection before proceeding to do that post-mortem inspection. And um, the reason being, as Mr. Philippi has outlined, there are diseases that perhaps you can pick up at anti-mortem that you, you may not see within okay. a post-mortem inspection. 
So um, it therefore means that this animal has been cleared from the anti-mortem. And f the post-mortem inspection will follow a systematic approach where the officer will go through the, more or less the lymphatic system of that animal, going through all the lymph nodes, going through all the organs and organ systems. Um, they are looking for both um, physiological and pathological conditions um, um, that can render that, that carcass or the, the meat rather unfit for consumption. And uh, you could have abscesses, you could have parasitic infection, um, sometimes even in the absence of disease, as um, the veterinary division will tell you, we don't have a lot of um, serious disease here in our animal stock. Um, but sometimes because of the way, and that's why Mr. Philippi has indicated as well, that the antimortem needs to be t t needs to take place within 24 okay. hours because that animal needs to be rested properly. Mm -hmm. okay. And in the absence of, of that kind of rest, um, you find you could have excessive blood congestion, you could have other conditions such as um, aspiration pneumonia that can render the organs like the lungs unfit where you have the feces passing back through it because the animal was either improperly stunned and when you speak about stunning, we are speaking about um, techniques that is yeah, used um, you to put that animal mm -hmm. more or less unconscious. So all of those things are very important. And that is why it is important that um, the public as well, um, they ensure that the meat that they are purchasing, purchasing has in fact undergo uh, uh, um, inspection to ensure that it is fit for human consumption. Okay, so I guess that's why it's important that they do it 24 hours before, so that way they know for sure the animal is actually fit. Yeah, the, the, 20, uh, the, the 24 hours win window is basically uh, uh, it's a, it's a buffer. So let's say you do the inspection 24 hours before, and then that period, that's why if that period has elapsed and you have not con uh, conducted that slaughtering process, you have to redo the, the anti-mortem inspection again because 24 hours in the life of an animal is a long time. So yeah. anything can manifest itself within, yeah. within that 24 hours. So once that 24 hours has elapsed, it's, by, it's mandatory that you do another anti-mortem inspection because anything can manifest itself after yeah, that. Okay, great. Well, we are due for a break, so we'll be back in a moment. Thank you. We'll be back in a moment. Attention St. Lucia. The Ministry of Health is seeking your support. The Ministry of Health will be conducting an island-wide survey to understand the effect chronic diseases like diabetes and hypertension is presently having on our people. This survey will start from November 2019 and will end in February 2020. If you are selected to participate, a team from the Ministry of Health and the Central Statistics Department will visit your home. You will be asked to answer some questions on your health status and health habits, and a nurse will test your blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugar. The nurse will also collect some urine to test how well your kidneys work. Your participation will make the difference in improving how chronic conditions are managed in our country. Engage in the change to reverse chronic illnesses. Participate. Welcome back. We are here with Ernie Pierre and Columbus Philippe discussing livestock butchering and meat inspection process. Before we took the break, we were talking in terms of the anti-mortem inspection, and we spoke about, briefly, Mr. Ernie Pierce also spoke about what are some of the things they look out for when they do the meat inspection. And you mentioned in terms of the lungs and everything else. Can you elaborate a little bit more in terms of what judgment is being made to determine that a certain part of this animal is not fit for consumption? Basically, judgment in terms of meat inspection can be um, of two types. It can be localized. Uh, it can be uh, in terms of disease. You can have disease conditions that are localized. In that instance, you would have partial condemnation. Um, for example, if it is the organ that is found, the liver is found mm -hmm. um, to be bad, that liver can be condemned. Um, if you find a portion of the animal that perhaps has an abscess or excessive bruising, that portion can be condemned. There are conditions as well that are generalized, and uh, in generalized conditions, it will um, you will have to condemn the entire animal. Um, so, if there are no disease conditions, likewise, that animal is passed as um, fit for human consumption. And um, once that animal has been passed, or the carcass rather, 
um, is passed or has been fit for human consumption, it is stamped. Um, with, with do carry stamps, inspectors carry stamp. They will put a number of um, stamp it a number of places uh, in conspicuous areas where the purchasing public can see. Um, also, a wholesomeness certificate is in fact issued um, should that meat be chopped where um, the person who's making the purchase cannot see that stamp, they can in fact request, is there a wholesomeness certificate? There will be a wholesomeness certificate that is issued at all times once that animal has been inspected and passed. Um, so there are localized conditions, it could be parasitic infection and so on, um, confining itself to a certain organ and um, that organ can be condemned. Great. And you mentioned a little bit about the process of the meat inspection. But before I allow you to give us a little more information about the meat inspection process, I would like Mr. Philippe to tell us what are the requirements, what documents would the butcher require? Before an anti-mortem inspection is carried, uh, the butcher will have to contact the Environmental Health Department to get a, a license to operate a slaughterhouse permit to operate a solar house. Plus, they will, have, they will need a butcher's license, which is issued by the police. So these are two very important documents that the veterinary department will require of the, of the butcher in order to conduct the anti-mortem inspection. Okay, and I guess with those documents, that's where we come in now with environmental health coming on site. So can you tell us a little more about the process and what are those documents that you would be looking out for? Okay, basically, um, when a butcher decides to slaughter, um, they would visit our offices in Badawange or um, Soufre or Vufort um, to make a declaration that they are going to slaughter. That butcher and the, the butcher and helpers uh, or persons that will be taking part um, in that slaughtering process will have to have health certificates. It is, it is a requirement by law um, that they have those health certificates. Um, once those health certificates are in place, um, they inspectors also will inspect the area where that slaughter um, facility is, where they will be doing the butchering. Um, for now, we would ask that at least they have portable um, running water, um, um, they have a slaughter slab, they have a superstructure, um, even if it's not a full-fledged abattoir, but they have a place where that operation can be carried out under sanitary conditions. Um, once that is done, that they would in fact um, um, pay a fee, um, which they would be issued a receipt, and that receipt, as Mr. Philippi mentioned, they would also have to make a declaration with the police. Um, so upon getting that receipt, they would bring it to the police to see that they have had approval and clearance um, um, from health. Um, they would make a declaration to the police to say what animals they have, where they obtain it, the receipts of purchase, um, for pre pre any reasons, and the police would issue what is the butcher's license, and that that would coincide, and that flow of process would go right into anti uh, the anti mortem inspection, as Mr. Philippi has mentioned. Wonderful, and we're almost out of time. If you could tell us quickly what message you'd like to send out to St. Lucians. Basically, um, St. Lucians need to ensure that when they are purchasing products, their meat products as um, we have mentioned, um, that it is inspected, um, that they can see the stamp. And if the stamp is not there and they still want to inquire, they should ask of the butcher for the certificate of wholesomeness um, to ensure that the products are in fact wholesome that they are purchasing. Thank you so much. Well, we have come to the end of our discussion for today. I want to thank you so much for being part of our program. It was definitely a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Okay. I want to thank you so much once again. I am Fennel Neptune on behalf of the entire team. Thank you for watching. Until next time.